this request comes from a subscriber who was watching Quick Tip 363, which is when to use white. And and he, he asked, he, yeah, okay, I guess, um, says that Rembrandt, hmm, Rembrandt has a transparent white. How and when would you use it, or would you? Hey, yeah, that's another new toy to play with. Well, this is the Rembrandt Transparent White. Uh, I would like to just do some comparisons with you of, of uh, transparent white and our traditional whites and then show you some options and some ideas. The question was, uh, how would you use it or would you? So we'll answer that question. But first of all, let me show you why they call it transparent white or how transparent it is. So I have on my palette here my my white, which is the Gamlin Titanium White. That's the really, really opaque white. And I put here the Permalba White, which is the, uh, I guess it's half and half, uh, it's Titanium and Zinc White. I don't have a tube of Zinc White, so I can't show you that comparison, but I just want to show you this. And then this is the Rembrandt Transparent White. So let's just do a little bit of comparison. Now, I have another quick tip on testing transparency, uh, but this is what I'm going to do here. You can test the transparency of any tube color by taking a, a sheet of canvas and just use um, a permanent marker like this that you can find at, at the dollar stores or Walmart, someplace like that. Be sure it's permanent. Uh, and you put a nice, nice black line across, and then that can show you the transparency and so we will start out with my titanium white uh, my gamlin titanium white gamlin is my favorite uh white so that's what i use and you can see it's very opaque I'm, I'm making a well kind of a moderately thin stroke not too thin not too thick just to give that a true test you can see a little bit of that coming through but that's still uh very opaque as far as colors go now, I'll pull, the, I'll pull the color out of that. In fact, I think I've just rinsed the brush because I want to be sure all that is out. But to truly test the transparency, if you, if you rinse your brushes, you've got to be sure and dry them thoroughly because the solvent from the brush will get into the paint and make it more transparent so you don't get a true test. So let's just uh, let's do the Permalba next to just show you the comparison there. So this is the Permalba. Um, and then I'll put in just a uh, stroke there, and you can see that has a very good coverage too. Now usually uh, we can see that uh, if you're using zinc white, or we can see that the zinc white tends to be slightly, slightly transparent. Let me just pull that down a little bit more. Yeah, you can see there's not much difference between those two. If you want to split hairs, you could say that the Promalba shows a little bit more transparency than the um, titanium white does, the Gamlin titanium white. Now let's, use, let's uh, test the Rembrandt transparent white. And you can see then what we mean by what they call transparent. Once again, I'm very, very careful that I uh, dry that brush thoroughly. And then I'll reach in that to the Rembrandt transparent white, load the brush just like I did before, and pull that down here and you can already see that uh, let's put it, let's make it a little bit thicker. You see that was a relatively thin stroke, and here make it a little thick. You see, it really does uh, fall uh, well, pretty much pass the test. I would instead of calling it transparent, I'd call it semi-transparent because it's not totally transparent. Now uh, there are other ways though that you can create a transparent white without buying a tube of the transparent white, and I want to show you that too. The one that I favor is the uh, Gamlin. The Gamlin has come out with a solvent-free gel, 
and the gel is kind of, it's an oil painting medium but solvent free and it doesn't have any odor it's made most mostly of safflower safflower oil and um uh, and an alkyd resin and so it doesn't have that odor which is really good but you need to use it very cautiously they recommend not more than 25 or you might say one 25 percent what is that one to three or one to four something like that uh but anyway not very good with math <clears throat> Art my field. <laughs> so I'll put a little bit of this out here on the palette. That's the trans that's the um, solvent free gel by Gamlin. And now let's do a comparison. I'll take the titanium white. This is my most opaque white. I'll take the titanium white and I'll be careful now uh, in looking at the amount of titanium white I have down there. I want to put just the maximum amount that they recommend, which was a be about maybe just a little bit more than that, about like that. Let's mix it thoroughly into the titanium white, and let's compare that with the Rembrandt transparent white and see what we have. So you can get that. I know I'm going to get, would get that question. Uh, about these these uh, gel mediums that pr produce transparency. So I thought we'd just go ahead and answer it right here. So now I have my brush really nice and clean and dry. And let's move into this now. This is the mixture. And let's test it right here. And you can see even with the mixture, we do get, now let me make that, let me make that just a little bit thinner. Make that just a little bit thinner. You see, with the mixture, it doesn't really create the transparency as we get with the other. Now, if you wanted to be adventurous and and not follow their recommendation, they don't explain. Gimlin doesn't explain why they recommend not going beyond 25% of that. But uh, people will artists are the worst. The worst. No, I shouldn't say worst. Artists are adventuresome like uh, Leonardo was. He would always be experimenting. And um, as a result, the Last Supper so fell apart before it was dry good. But uh, he, w he had that experiment, uh, that uh, experimenting nature. And most artists will have experimenting nature. And just because a company says, uh, don't, don't, don't mix more than 25%, uh, a lot of us will say, why not? And if we can't find the answer, why well, not? We'll try it out anyway. <laughs> So you can see, I don't have much space left here, but I guess just a little bit here. Uh, I should put it right here. So see, if you were, if you were adventuresome, uh, and you decided, well, you know, what difference is it going to make or whatever, uh, you would just ignore their recommendation. Now, then you ask the question, well, how did Rembrandt make this transparent? Well, it says it has the safflower oil in it as the uh, as the vehicle, as the medium that, that it's made. but it doesn't tell you. Rembrandt is kind of stingy with their information of what they're of uh, uh, what they put on their tube, so we don't really know the answer to that. So anyway, if you are doing painting where you you want more transparency than you're getting with uh, colors, for example, I'm going to show you in just a moment. Uh, a couple of things that you might do with the transparent white. Then the transparent white might be a color you want to put in your collection. Uh, if you if you feel more adventuresome and uh, you'd like to just uh, have something available to make a color more transparent and go beyond the recommendation of what's on the tube, uh, then the Gamlin uh, gel would be a choice for you. Uh, but let's, let's look now at why that was the question. Would I use it and why? I do have it in my paint, and uh, I don't use it very much. In fact, I've never used it in a painting. Uh, but I have played with it some to see sort of what it would do, but I haven't had need for it in the painting because I usually uh, do the kinds of things it will do in another way. But suppose th this is a, a, just a demonstration that is unfinished that I did for our workshop. And uh, and so let's assume that I come back. This is this has been done. I don't know, several months, maybe over a year. Uh, 
And, and suppose you have paint that's already dry, which is one way that you can go. And you come back and you say, I really would like more, a more of a misty or foggy effect in there than I have. I made that in a pretty much a sunlit day and whatever, but what if the sun is shining, but we still have some fog rising in the background? Well, in that case, you could go to your transparent white. You could work some of the white, the transparent white into the brush. And by the way, you, if you try this with the, just the regular titanium white, it's going to smear, and it's, it's, it's not, it's not going to give you the control. But you can see here, now, if I decide, if I decide, okay, I would like to have some, I've got almost too much in there, I would like to have some fog coming up behind there. And I'd like to get that foggy effect in there. You see what I did? I'm making that rather light at the bottom, and I'm letting it, I'm letting it blend out to the top, and I would continue in that direction throughout and then maybe have a little bit of foggy effect over in here. Now because the the paint itself is already balanced, uh, we don't have to worry about any, um, as, as that dries, we don't have to worry about it being, uh, us having like maybe too much medium in there, which a lot of people will do, not even realize it, that it may be having an adverse effect. So that's the kind of thing that I would do with transparent white if if I if I uh, if I decided to use it. In, in other words, if I decided I wanted fog, I'm just trying to make that feel consistent throughout. If, if I decided I wanted fog in this little piece, uh, then I would after it dries, uh, I would go in. I would use the uh, Rembrandt Transparent White and put that fog in. Now you can see that uh, when we do that, uh, I have to point this out, that we do have that red, that effect of what white does to warm colors. It makes them cooler. And, but fog, the fog is cooler in temperature. Uh, because the fog is made up of, of, of water and mist and whatever. And generally, when you see fog, it does obscure the, the temperature of the colors and does make them cooler. Uh, if, on the other hand, you prefer that you not have your painting to go quite so cool, you can add a little bit of a, uh, another color to it. It will still st tra stay transparent. Now, let me show you what I'm talking about there. And, uh, and then you could do your own experimenting. This just kind of gives you a handle if you want to play with uh, transparent white and you want to add it to your arsenal, uh, then just, just get you going on a little bit of an experiment. So this is yellow green. And so what I would do there is I would create uh, some yellow green and I would, I'm using the, the ultramarine blue and the, the uh, Hansa Yellow Light here for that because I want to keep that green relatively low in saturation. Otherwise, I would have reached for a more sat saturated uh, um, color to mix. Okay, let's just assume that's it right there. Now, now what I can do is just to take my the corner of my palette knife and pull a bit, just a hair, just a bit of that, just to get a slight tint of that into the white. And let's see, and I'll hold that up. Now you see that still feels relatively cool, but here's where you would balance it out. You would say, oh, that's not working. That's just going to make it cooler. What you can do there is you can add enough yellow back in. Once you if that's what you see, or maybe I'm, I'm working with yellow green now, but you might be working with any color. And this is just to show you how to balance that out in case that's what you decided to do. And so there we go. You see now by adding a little bit more yellow into that, I've got it. Now let's test that now and see how transparent that is because I added some opaque color into it. And be sure that, okay, the brush has not got any of the other color into it. So if I do that, Let's even come over in here now and show you the difference. You see that has a very slight, it has a very slight more, uh, a little bit more warmth to it than this does. And you see, 
you can see it's maybe a little bit more opaque, but it does have that, we are able to read that as transparent. And uh, uh, we can see through, see the images of the grass blades and whatever through that, so we can see that it does give us that transparent effect. See, so that's a, just a fun thing for you to play with. Another option for you to add to your uh, your arsenal, if you if you want to, if that's something that you, if transparency is something that you want to play with, um, and I think we give it a try and see if it works for you. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. And while you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.